Welcome, welcome everybody. Tuesday night, not my normal Thursday night live, but I thought I would go, I'm working on a candy corn. So I thought I would bring you in and chat with you while I try to do this project that kind of got in my head, don't really have a pattern pattern yet. So we'll see how it works out. But come on in to my craft room, welcome. And uh, my name is Pam Savage and I am owner of Young at Heart Creations where we do all kinds of creating, mostly painting, uh, but every now and then we throw something a little little different in there. Hi, Megan, thank you so much for hopping on. I've got a little bit of an allergy voice tonight, so bear with me, I've got my water over here and tissues and all that good stuff, so hopefully, hopefully we won't have any issues with that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and bring you up on my iPad so I can see your comments. Especially if you're new tonight, if you would, when you hop on, let me know where you're from and that this is your first time. See if I can get me turned off over here. I don't want, I don't want to hear my voice. I hope I sound better to you than I sound to me. So, all right, let me get you pulled up here. There we go. And let's see. All right, there's my Peggy and Jean and Jerry. All right, ladies. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I can always count on those regulars that are always on here, my cheerleaders, and I love you so much and I appreciate you so much. But again, if you're new, just hopping on for the first time, please let me know that this is your first time and where you're from. Tonight, we're just going to do a simple little candy corn. Well, I don't know how little it is, but let's see. Let me measure here about 19 inches tall so um, I'm going to use a little bit of fabric on it as well look at this we've done uh, a couple of things with this fabric I'm trying to use it all up but it's so that so cute everybody's loving gnomes I'm finally getting on the gnome back bandwagon probably as it's going to be going out I'm just getting onto the that wagon but we're going to go with it anyway so I'm not going to paint this down. I've already base coated it in a white. Haven't done anything with the back. I'll probably do a stain on the back. But um, so I've just got it um, in the white base coated. Now this would be cute. You could turn it around on the other side and put a ghost on it. Wouldn't that make a cute ghost pattern for Halloween? So I might do that before the night's over. So I left that blank because I wasn't real sure what I was going to do. But, so you could put a ghost. And then uh, candy corn or whatever you wanted on this side. We're going to do candy corn tonight. So I'm going to start with uh, bright orange. And then we'll do a little bit of shading on it. Hi, Pam. Hello, hello, Miss Jean. All right, my comments are showing up good over here. Okay, so I'm going to bring you down since my comments are showing over there. And I did post a picture of this. I'm not sure if everybody saw it yet, but... I forgot to post a picture earlier of the finished, um, and it, you could put a bow or a raffia or anything up here, but it says, I know it's backwards for you, it says, hello fall, with a little pumpkin in the middle. Uh, this is the words 3D. And it turned out cute. I love the colors of it. But that will be in the fall, I mean, in the live sale Friday night. Uh, it will be $25. I'm not going to tell you the number yet. Um, I've seen y'all on some of these live sales where you get that number, uh, number system figured out and y'all are commenting sold before <laughs> they actually even post it. So it ought to be interesting for my first one Friday night. That'll be at 6.30 this Friday night. So um, come join. Um, don't feel obligated to buy anything. It's just practice for me and... Um, I'm just wanting to kind of see how I can, I've done so many craft shows and things like that, but I've never done a live sale. So I'm anxious to kind of get one under my belt and get comfortable with it so that I can do more in the future. Mostly what I will have to sell is um, a lot of my spring items, spring and summery type items. And the spring items I've marked, really marked down. So you'll be getting a good bargain on them. Um, and I've got some Christmas and fall items that will be normal price, but some of them are also marked down. Uh, just for my first one, I wanted to give you some good sale prices and make you feel like you were getting a bargain. All right, I will post the rules to that tomorrow. I think it's when those post out, how the flow will go. And um, so 
hopefully that'll make it easier for you and yeah, for me too. All right, I'm going to bring you down. Hi, Heather. Let's go and get you down here. All right. Y'all let me know if you can see that, okay? I think it'll show up all right. All right, so I'm going to start with the bright orange. I've already base coated white, so I don't want to put any uh, a color under this. Normally, you would have yellow, orange, and white, but we don't want to, we don't need to put yellow because we're going to put our fabric under uh, on this section, so we don't need to do anything with that. All right, I'm going to start with my um, one and a half inch flat. You could do it. You could do a smaller one, uh, a smaller brush as well. Plates out of the way here. So I'm really excited about it. Friday, my hubby David, or Mr. Pam, as all of y'all call him, that have met him, Crystal King gave him that name at one of my paint parties, and it just kind of stuck with him. So he answers to it now. Ooh, that's a pretty orange. It's a uh, deco art bright orange. I haven't used it a lot, but I thought it would work well with this color combination tonight. We got rain again this morning. I think that's three days in a row that we've gotten rain after going over two months without rain. My front door is finally opening again. When it gets really, really dry for a long period of time, we have a drought, my front door stops closing because the house settles. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this just a little bit so we can put a second coat on it. So it's opening again. Hello, Miss Nene. I may be falling in and out. I had kidney stone surgery today and resting in my recliner. Oh, I'm so sorry, Peggy. My husband has had kidney stones, and I know that is no fun at all. I had a friend that um, she had kidney stones, and she'd had two children, and I said, which is worse? She said, honestly, the kidney stone pain was worse. And... With kidney stones, you know you're not going to get the reward of a precious, sweet little baby afterwards. So she voted that kidney stones were worse. Okay, let me let that cool just a second. I don't like to put paint on when it's hot. All right, that should do it. Peggy, I'm glad you've got it done, over with, and on to recovery. When I scheduled my live sale Friday, I wasn't thinking, but I have a minor surgery uh, Thursday. They are going to put what's called a loop recorder right next to my heart that will record and send everything to the doctor. Anything my heart's doing, good or bad. So hopefully it's all good. But you have to leave it in for four years, but they're wanting to get some immediate feedback to determine if I need to be on some different medicines or if I'm gonna be just okay without any medicine. So we'll see. It's just supposed to be outpatient. I don't think, they, they don't even put you to sleep. They just do a lot of numbing before they make the incision to insert the device or implant, I think is what they call it. So I should feel fine the next day, Friday. We're going with it regardless. I may be a little loopy if I'm on medication, <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Okay, I don't think I'm going to need a third coat on there. I think that that's covering pretty good. 
and the top part is white, so I don't have to do a base coat on that. So we got away pretty good with our base coating. We'll do this last because I don't want to get any paint on the material. While that's still wet, I'm going to take a little bit smaller. Um, let's see what I've got over here. Take a one inch, half inch. I think it's a half inch flat. And we'll do a little bit of shading with some burnt umber. While our paint's still a little bit wet. Okay, and I'm just gonna dirty it up with that base coat color. And we'll put a little bit just on the corner and get some shading in here. Oh, that's pretty. It's gonna be kind of a, I guess you call it a loose painting tonight. the difference that makes. Hi Sandy and Charlotte and Miss Karen and Jennifer. If y'all are new be sure to let me know where you're watching from and that this is your first time. Okay so we've got the bottom shaded. I just stuck my finger on the edge so I'll have to go over that with some black. Talking and not watching. was so hard to know what exactly, what all to put in the sale because I, ha I still have a room full of stuff. But I didn't want to overload because I don't want to be on there or have y'all have to be on there for two hours. It may be two hours anyway. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know if I do a live sale faster than what I do uh, when I paint, hopefully. My husband said, well, what exactly is it that you want me to do? I said, I just want you to sit in your recliner, look pretty, and watch the comments to see who comments first, who comments sold first. And he said, well, I can handle that. Okay, and I think on this one, we'll just do some polka dots. Just something, I don't want to, just a solid color. Well, so I think polka dots will break it up enough. And I'm just dipping into that shading color. And yeah, just a little bit of water. There we go. Smooth some of that paint out just a little bit. Okay, let's dry that and then we'll mix this up some paint to make our polka dots with. Well, I always just hold the two bottles together and see what they look like together. But a surefire way is to take your base color and either add a dark, <clears throat> excuse me, add a darker color to it or add uh, like white to lighten it up. But I typically just go through my paint and 
hold them up to, to each other just to kind of see what they look like. You can also, like here I was practicing uh, earlier just to see what that orange looked like on the yellow. And I just kind of think, what would I do if I were doing it in a coloring book? What color would I use to shade? And I just, I typically go with that. Okay, so I'm gonna put some of that orange that we just used, about the size of a quarter, and I'm gonna add some white to it for our polka dots. Okay, and then I'm gonna use just the um, bottom of my, the end of my paintbrush handle and just mix it up and see if that made it light enough. You could put different color um, polka dots and something that would contrast the orange, but I'm just gonna go with a little bit lighter. Just really getting it mixed well. So that way I know it's not gonna clash because it's the same base coat color. I decided this size would be best. I've got four different sizes over there and I decided this size would be best. And it's about, it's probably just a little bit bigger than a quarter. It's about the same size. It is the same size as the bottom of the paintbrush. I mean the paint bottles. Okay, so I'm not even gonna get it wet. Just going to dip it in. I do want a little bit of white also though just to kind of go ahead and give it a highlight. Okay, so I've got it on there, but I'm gonna wipe most of it off. And then just on the tip, just the top part there, we'll come over with, with that and make that a kind of a highlight on it. Pressing down, turning, and lifting. Now, instantly, you've got your highlight, but you've also got your little bubbles. These pouncers cause bubbles. You can just barely blow, and they're gone. Now, it's still gonna have a little bit of texture, but I don't mind that texture. And when you're doing your uh, polka dots, you wanna do it in a triangular pattern so that you're, you don't end up with five dots over here and maybe just two over here. I think I can get one more out of this. So I'm pressing down and lifting up. Okay, I'm gonna reload, put it on, take it off. Get some white on there. Smooth that out just a little bit. Okay, so we've got triangle, and we'll put one down here in just a second too. Triangle here. Let's put one coming off to the side here. Sorry, I've got you out of camera. So we'll go right up here off to the, like it's going off. Okay, let's put one right here. And we'll 
let's put a half one there. Let me grab a piece of paper. Forgot to get a sticky note out. This should work. should do it. Okay, let's put one right here up at the top just to give it some uniformity. Is that a word? Uniformity? <laughs> I think that looks good. Let's put one more right here. I changed my mind. like it I can always paint over it it's getting a little bit too wet You don't want to blow too hard or they'll splatter on you, splatter on your piece. I think we'll leave that. I think that'll do okay. Got a little touch up to do there, but that will be fun. Okay, so we've got our polka dots that fast. We've already got our highlighting in. Now I could have to the bottom of the uh, daughter the pouncer. I could have put a darker color down here to, to give it even some shading down at the bottom. But I think we'll leave it at that. Let's go ahead and dry it just a little bit. So I'm not rubbing my arm across it. Hi Linda and Ruth. And Alton, Teresa, Sheila, Lisa. Oh, we've got a lot of new names tonight. That's wonderful. Um, what kind of chart, Karen? What kind of chart are we talking about? I'm sorry. Tennessee. Oh, oh, Karen Tesser. I thought you were saying you were from Tennessee. Oh, look up Deco Art Shading Chart. Yes. Um, I just heard about that myself. Hi, Gail and Kimberly and Miss Kathy. Thanks, everyone, so much for hopping on. I've got another candy corn that I finished. It has a napkin in the middle. That will also be in the sale Friday night. Okay, now while I have some white still wet, I'm going to go ahead and put just a little, um, just a little swirl in each of these just to give it even a little more added highlight. So wherever the white is, I'm going to go right under it and with my little liner brush, just give it another swirl. Just gives it another layer.
And these are just little comma strokes or little swooshes as I call them. I'm sure that's really a technical painting term, swooshes. Okay, now for the white, I think I'm going to shade it in yellow. Let's see what that looks like. So I've got cadmium yellow. And my white is already dry because I base coated it earlier. So I'm just going to add a little bit of moisture. Just right around the piece. Not a ton. And I've got some white here that I'll use as my base. And then we'll add a little bit of that yellow. Again, just on the just on the corner. And let's see what this looks like. Not sure yet. Again, I didn't really plan plan what we were gonna do. Okay, I think that likes it. I mean, makes it look a little more finished. I just don't like it just the start white. And then we're going to put some little details in the center. Let's go ahead and do some, just adding a little bit of water, just a tiny bit of water, and we'll go ahead and, um, shade this as well. Just to kind of separate the sections. Okay, so now we've got our yellow on. you down just a little bit closer so bear with me just a moment adjust my archon a little bit all righty that helped just a little so let's put some, let's put some little bees and some little details up here. Our material that we're going to use has some little bees in it. So let's let's do that. Try not to get any any paint on that material, and I'm sure I probably will. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to freehand these bees. We'll see how it ends up. So let's go into our yellow. So we've already got our yellow out. I'm gonna use my little liner brush. And then 
we'll go over them in black. And I'm just going to barely outline where I want the head to be. Okay, yes, that's going to work. I'm going to grab a little bit larger brush. To fill it in with. This is a small round. And we'll just base coat in yellow, and then we'll put some black stripes and some wings on there. Since it's already white, we'll just kind of outline the wings. Okay, I think I can use this brush just to even outline the, the little bees. Okay, so we've got one bee there. And we'll just have them coming in all different directions. We'll have some fat ones, some skinny ones. Some that have been eating too much honey, some that maybe need more. Okay, that was a fat one. Plump one. I have been on the phone with insurance, doctors, Pharmacists all day today. Um, one of the medications I'm taking, blood thinner, it's called Eliquis. Doctor gave me a sample when I left a month ago and said, let's just do a sample right now until we see exactly what, if we're going to keep you on it. Uh, and I said, you know, that's fine. So sample ran out. I called To get a refill, pharmacist called me and said, sorry, insurance won't cover it. And I said, well, can I just pay for it out of pocket? And they said, well, yeah, you can. It's $1,500 every time you have it filled. So $1,500 for 30 little pills. So needless to say, we won't be doing that. So they're um, going a different route. I, you know, how do people survive? So we, um, what we're going to do, they're going to, since they're not sure I'm going to be staying on it, we're just going to do the samples for three months and uh, watch my heart with the recorder. And he said, maybe they can even just take me off of blood thinner altogether. So I've never been on it before. This is the first time. And if I don't have to be on any medicine, I, I just would prefer not to be. I'm not a medicine taker. I mean, I will take it if they tell me to, but I don't even like taking Tylenol, but I do. If they got a So my body is like, no, not another change. I told my husband, I said, you know, where I'm going to have this procedure done, we have to pass my uh, Michaels. We don't have a Michaels here. It's about 45 minutes away. And I said, we got to pass Michaels. So when I get done... If I'm not, um, 
loopy or whatever. <laughs> I said, can we run by Michael's? And he said, I think you probably need to come home and not make a Michael's trip that day. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see. So I'm thinking positive here. All right, let's put one more up here. Okay, I'm gonna dry this and I'm gonna put one more little coat over these just to be on the safe side. Oops, I think we need one right here. That just looks kind of blank right there. Kind of make him going in this direction. So I've been getting my dining room all ready for the sale Friday because I'm, uh, I forgot how many days it is. You're not supposed to lift anything. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and get the setup ready. And my living room looks so festive with all my stuff in there. All right, let's dry and put one more coat on it. Yes, Donna, and good medicine too. Hi, Denise. Hello, hello. Hi, Sherry. Okay, we're going to do something in between here as well. And I'll need to remember to turn my little iron on in a minute to get it all ready. Okay, so now let's go with, uh, let's put a second coat on these real fast and then we'll add our black to them. Probably could have gotten by with just one coat, but since I've already got it out, may as well so um the reason i'm going live tonight is because um i will not be able to go live thursday because that's when the procedure is i think i would feel just fine and feel like it but my husband said nope you're gonna rest so so i guess i need to just lay back rest and watch all of your videos This cadmium yellow cover is pretty good. I rarely have any problems with it. Okay, one more draw. My husband said you will go to Michael's. Sounds like someone else he knows <laughs> when he gets close to him, Michael's. <laughs> I'm 120 miles away. <laughs> That's right, hubby. <laughs> Hi, Vicki. Sherry is from Tennessee. Yay. We've got lots of friends in Tennessee. Uh, two of my children went to uh, college in Henderson, Tennessee. So we've made lots and lots and lots of trips to, to Tennessee. Tennessee has some beautiful, beautiful places. Okay, now let's get our black out. Shouldn't take much. And I'm switching back to that small liner brush. And I'm gonna start up here at the top one. And we'll make a little head. I need to boil this brush. It's losing its shape. I 
Let's see, I'm trying to decide if I want to do Ziggy Zag. Stripe, no, I don't think so, since they're not that way on the material. I'll just do regular. Lots of little heads here. And for the heads, I'm just doing a half circle. Filling it in. Doing our stripes. And then we'll do some little antennae and some wings. Uh, let's go ahead and do this one. This is the second candy corn I've ever done. I don't think I've done very many. This is one that I cut on my bandsaw. I don't know if y'all can see how bent that brush is, but it's making it hard to paint with it. But if you just dip it in boiling water for just a few seconds, it'll get its shape back. I did have another one, but I think it's in my travel case. And we'll see if we can make do with it until the end of this one and then I'll clean it good. It's starting to want to separate on, on me. good little brush. I've used it for several months, but they do start splitting. I'm kind of having to force it to do what I want it to do. I'm determined I'm going to win. Okay, a couple of more heads and then we'll put the little antennae. 18 miles from Henderson. Oh, okay. Go to Michael's on your post-op appointment. 
Yes, I could, but it's about three weeks afterwards. I don't buy a lot from Michaels. Their prices, unless they're having a sale, are typically more expensive than Hobby Lobby, and I've got a Hobby Lobby here. But our Michaels is just so pretty. The way they have the displays, I mean, it's just, you just walk in and you're inspired. So I like to just go in and just walk around. I did get most of my door prizes for my live event that I had last August uh, for the door prize drawings. I got most of them from Michaels. They were having a sale and it worked out just right. Craft carts and things of that nature. Is anybody on here familiar with Canton Trades Days in um, Tyler, Texas? I saw my son sent me a um, newsreel yesterday that it is, it's underwater. I mean, the pavilions are like three to four feet underwater. I could not believe it. Luckily, it was not a Trades Day weekend there are some people that leave their items there and just rent the space, you know, all the time. So I'm sure there was some damage to, um, you know, to goods, but most of the crafters were not there, so. I, I just couldn't believe how much water there was. One year, not too long ago, they had a tornado go right through the grounds. And there was a lot of damage from that. On a good weekend, there's um, sometimes up to 300,000 people there, shoppers. And it goes from, I think, Thursday through um, the Monday. It's always the first Monday weekend. And so there's lots of people that go through there from all over the, the world. Okay, well, let's make some little, let me dry this and make some little antennas. Hi, Annette. Hi, Danita. Thank you. I'm hoping when we add our little gnomes that it's really gonna make it pop. All right, so I'm just going to curve them out. With my crooked little brush. We get to go see our baby Saturday. He has changed so much in just the last week and a half. He's lifting his head up with his arms. I mean, like he's just going to lift his whole body up. He's really, he hasn't laughed out loud yet, but just grinning from ear to ear when you talk to him. start keeping him here in uh, about three weeks, I think. Okay, I'm going to take one of my little um, styluses, my little daughters, and put a little ball on the end of each one. And see how long it takes me before I run my arm through one.
I gotta put some wings on them. We're gonna put some little flowers to match, uh, to kind of match what's on the material. It won't be exact, but it'll give the illusion that they're there. Okay, so I think for the wings, I'm just going to, I think I'm just gonna outline them in gray, but I do want to go around each bee with some black. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my black. Just to thin it out just a little. some room here keep you in camera so the big craft show that I do every year the big one um, I do others but um, is in November so I've been also trying to get things ready for that I've got a lot of things to paint so I'm gonna be putting in some pretty good hours the next couple of months Okay, I'm just going to outline the bees in black. Just makes them stand out a little more. Let's go ahead and dry these dots a little bit. Maybe I won't swipe them everywhere. I watered this black down a little bit so it would flow a little easier. I'm also teaching pre-K through first grade in... Um, our congregation Bible class this quarter. I've been teaching the twos and threes for the last, I guess, three, four years. So I'm having to get my mind in gear for the older ones. And I've been having one to maybe three in the two-year-old class. This class has usually has 10. If the visitors are there, so I got to get my energy level up. So I've been working on those lessons. They're so cute. I just love the kiddos. Let me tell you, our kiddos in our congregation are incredibly smart and very knowledgeable of the Bible. You would be surprised what the kids know. We have several um, little training sessions that we do with them, but our Bible classes are fun, but they are full of Bible facts uh, they have a lot of memory work that they do, and um, just so proud of them. Our two-year-olds can say the books of the New Testament, and they have memory verses that they know, and they come and say to us during class. It's just incredible. 
Okay, let's put a little bit of a white highlight. If I can get my brush to get together. Just right at the base of his head. Tiny little detail, but close up, it really makes a difference. Okay, and I can even come back with a lighter yellow and highlight just a little bit in the yellow. But let's go ahead and get our gray. I'm going to use gray sky and just outline some wings. Don't think it'll take much, so I've just got a little dab here. Still using that tiny little liner brush. And it still looks so bare with all of that being white. But we're about to change that. So I need to go ahead and turn my little. We're going to be using this little iron. So I'm going to turn that on and let it be getting hot. Okay, let's do. Let's do a double wing. Okay, I'm watering that gray down just a little. Anytime I'm doing liner work, I just like to kind of thin it out to ink consistency. Almost just giving the illusion of wings to show what we've got so far. Okay, and we're going to put some little flowers, and then we may put some little dash lines. Don't know, that might be a little bit too busy. We'll, we'll see. Just kind of making some swooshes again. Whoops. Okay, even though I dried it with the dryer, this dot right here was not dry. Not completely dry on the inside, so I kind of smeared it a little bit. So I'll have to fix it with some white. I'm gonna go ahead and do the wings, and then I can fix it. Um, well, let's go ahead and see if we can fix it a little bit with, while my white is still wet over here. I might take a couple of coats to do it. And I'm just gonna dab it on. Let that dry, and then we'll come back and do it, another coat on it. And I think we'll be fun. But those dots, even though they look dry on the outside, they're 
still wet on the inside. Takes them a little while to dry. Got him a little close to the edge. And this is what makes it look so hand painted. I, you know, I like it because there no two are just alike. was a little thick so I'll probably clean it up with just a little bit of white. Let it dry a minute. Where that black got. And then I'll put a fresh dot in there in just a little bit. Okay, you can't even tell it. Dana and Tammy, so glad you're showing how to paint these because I have, I have to paint one or two on a project I'm going to do. Where did you get the words "Hello Fall"? Oh, I got them at Hobby Lobby yesterday, and they're on sale. All their, um, all of their fall stuff is on sale for fifty percent off, and it wasn't with all of the fall stuff. Stuff they were already moving. Christmas stuff in so they had their fall stuff in several different sections so you may just have to look all over it was already painted white and had an orange pumpkin the pumpkin was orange and I just painted it to match so I didn't have to paint the letters at all they were already white and distressed and it's chunky I mean it'll sit on a shelf So it really wasn't meant to be put on something, but it worked great for what I needed it for. I got more of the pumpkin, the pumpkin trios that I painted pumpkins on one side and snowmen on the other side. I got several of those. Those were all on sale. I'll have three of the three that I've already got painted. I'll have those in the sale Friday. So I'll just paint some more for the craft show. Those will go fast at the craft show. So I want to be sure and have several. Okay. So now, now with yours this next step you can use the end of your uh, paintbrush the tip of a pencil the stylus 
that's what I would use if uh, I weren't going to do it with my special tool. I have a special tool that was handmade for me uh, by a friend. So there are no more like it. I'm sorry. But you can get the same effect. It might just take you a little bit longer with um, using the stylus, the daughter. So let's do some orange and some yellow flowers. Actually, let's use this darker, this burnt orange. And let's just randomly put some flowers here and there. Okay, and then with my large stylus, I'm going to put yellow centers in those, and then we'll do yellow flowers with that color center, with the burnt orange center. And again, these dots will take a little bit to dry. Let me wash that color off. Okay, now let's go in and put some yellow flowers. I have to wipe this tool off pretty quick or the paint will dry on it and it's really hard to get off once it dries. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, now let's put some of that orange, burnt orange in the centers of those. Now tell me if I miss one. Okay, I think we got them all. Okay, so we're just going to let those sit and dry while we work on our material. So let me get the paint out of the way. And I'm going to use matte Mod Podge. And go ahead and put that on there and let it be drying. I know, I told him. Hi, Ann. I told him, Nay Nay, that if he would make some, we could sure sell them. He's, he makes like six ton bearings for rockets and all kinds of things. And... He said that one little tool was harder to make than some of those six-ton rocket pieces. I think he was just pulling my leg. Okay, so we're going to just put right up to where that orange stops. And 
our Mod Podge. Mod, I always say Mod Podge. It's Mod Podge with a D, but I always want to say Mod. Mod Podge. Let me get this on here and let it dry a minute and I'll be showing you some ribbon. I think we'll match it with a bow. Just want to make sure I get all of this covered, especially the edges. So I'm going out away from the edges. So not to, not to gunk it up on the sides. Okay, I think we're good on that. It looks shiny everywhere. Okay, we put the lid on this so it doesn't dry. Let's let that dry a second. Let me grab, I think it's in here. Let me, it may clash. It might not be the right color, but I think it would be so cute. other colors that I could put with it too but I'm just grabbing these to see what this is the one I had in mind but that yellow might be too dark I don't know I think I could make it work and then use some of the polka dot too I think I'm liking it, but I might have to lighten the bees up just a little bit. But I've got some light, light. This is a uh, ceram coat and it's pale yellow. So I'm gonna let this dry just a second and let's see if we could maybe lighten those up just a little bit. Now it matches great with the with this color on the material, but it looks a little bit darker on the on the bees. But let's see if we can highlight them a little bit and change that. I think we could get a pretty bow out of out of some stuff I've got. burn my hand. Forgot I had the iron heating up. Okay, I'm going to get just a little bit on the end of this little round brush and then get most of it off. But just put some highlights in here. And then I'll probably outline them a little better with um Black. Oh, yes. Okay, now I need to clean up with the, the black around the bee, but look at the difference. This one here is darker. This that lightens it up quite a bit on here. So I think that's the answer. And then I'll just swipe back over it with some the black. That way I don't have to be super careful with this lighter yellow.
That looks a little messy right now because I need to go back over it with the black. But. Definitely bringing it out a little more. That cadmium yellow almost has an orange tint to it. And I love it on so many things, especially my sunflowers. I use it a lot on those. But it, it for sure has a little bit of a, an orange tint to it. Probably why it covers better than most yellows. All right, while that's drying, while these are uh, drying, well, we need to give that a little bit longer on the Mod Podge. I can hit it with the hair dryer. It's not a hair dryer, it's a craft gun. Definitely do not want to dry your hair with this one. It's a um, craft tool, heating tool. It will burn your hair. It gets very hot. But it's, it's much, much quieter than a normal hair dryer. So it's great for doing lives or at a paint party. Okay, now I left some of that other yellow showing through. Just need to clean them up a little bit with my liner brush. And uh, on that black. Okay, let's go ahead and dry. Oh, but they're looking cute. Now they look really messy right now until I go back over the black. But the colors are really all coordinating, especially when we get this up with it. I think I'm going to like it. Especially when we get a pretty, uh, the hanger and a pretty bow on it. So let's get this almost dry. And we're going to use uh, parchment paper and my iron, my little craft iron. And then I will seal it. I'll put another coat of the Mod Podge once it's been dry over the top of it. Hi Donna and Melinda. Not sure where she got that one, but you can get one at the Dollar Tree in the craft department. Okay, we can get what at Dollar Tree in the craft department? Sandy? Hi Kimberly. Thank you, Heather. Hi Crystal Dawn. You loving the bees? Crystal, I was just telling them earlier that you're the one that gave my husband, David, the Mr. Pam name. I was telling him Mr. Pam's going to be helping me with my live sale Friday night and that you had given him that name and he can't get rid of it now. <laughs> and also put some squigglies around the top of, of this. We'll go, we can go around that part in black. Okay, I think that's dry enough. Now, what I did with this to, to get it just exactly right, I laid the material face down and then laid my piece on it and traced it with a pen and then cut it out. 
and laid it on here and just made a couple of pencil marks to show me where I wanted it to go so that I would know where to paint. So that's how we got that. Okay, so I wanna make sure that it's all covered, that I don't have any white showing. And I need a piece of parchment paper. Got this at Dollar Tree, I think. Dollar Tree or Walmart? Walmart, because it's great value. Double check one more time that I don't have any white showing. Oops, I moved it. Okay, now I want to be careful and not move it till I get it stuck down. And I've got my little iron on high. I'm really pressing down on it. Reactivating that Mod Podge. Making sure I get those edges down. I've got a plastic, clear plastic tablecloth over my floral tablecloth, so I want to be sure and not touch it. But I'm kind of going at an angle on those edges so that they're going down and around it. And then I'll check to see if we need any more Mod Podge underneath. If it, I just want to make sure that it sticks well. stuck. I don't see any edges coming up. Got one right there on the very tip. Okay, I'll go ahead and turn this off before I forget so it'll be cooling down. Um, this was at Walmart. Love, love, love it. You don't put any water in it. It was twelve, I think twelve ninety nine. I love it. It makes a great little travel iron too, which is what it is. It was back by your normal irons, regular irons. Okay. Feels like it's on really well. Now I will go back through, got just a little, some little threads. I'll go back through and put those down. When I Mod Podge the top of it, it'll go, those will go down. Let's go ahead while that's drying and take our liner brush. And I'm gonna use my 30 aught liner brush and Put the details right there and then we should be just about finished the only other thing I'm gonna do is put Mod Podge I'm gonna let it dry just a little bit more it's still warm I'm gonna put Mod Podge over the top of it and it'll make it kind of stiff let's let's put out some fresh black won't take much. I'm going to thin it down a little bit. I 
Okay, and let's just... You know, that, that ribbon could not have matched these bees any better. I got this ribbon in um, Laurel, Mississippi at Shirley's, I think. That might have been what I bought from my friend. Okay, so we're just going to go around and make some... Just some little swooshes. One, two, three. And I'll come back with my stylist and make better dots. Let's go all the way around. I'll give you a little bit better view of it. And we'll put three dots there. put our dots there on that one. Okay, so let's put some real dots now that we placed where we're going to put them. And then all that's left is cleaning up the bees, going back over them with the black liner. Sealing the fabric with the Mod Podge. And got some black on that dot, on that polka dot. clean up. I don't know if it's still wet. Yes. Baby wipes are your best friend. Okay, like it never happened. So with that little liner brush, okay, um, what kind of brush, which brush, the long liner is a Master's Touch 30-0, it's real long, it's a script liner, I love it, love, love, love it. This short one, the little one, is a 10 aught, and it's a velvet touch. It's a 10 zero. Now each each brush company has their own numbering system. So, like a 30 aught in this brand is not going to be a 30 aught in this brand. So they're they're all different, but um, they both came from Hobby Lobby. They're a little bit expensive, a little pricey, and so I wait until they're on sale. Um, before I get them some they run them 40% I mean 50% off several several times a year all right so let's go back and clean these little bees up okay 
Oh, yeah. It's going to look so much better. Okay, I'm not going to make you sit here through me cleaning up all those little bees. I'll do that off camera. Let's go ahead and seal our Mod Podge, I mean our fabric. And it makes it really stiff, but that's the same way I did all of the chickens that I did and some of the clipboards. And I do let it dry 24 hours before I do anything with it. I will go ahead and um, after everything dries, I will go ahead and just seal this, all of it, with the um, Mod Podge. If it's something that you're going to put outdoors in the weather, I would use a spray sealer on it. Since I'm going to have it in the live sale, I will probably go ahead and seal it with an outdoor sealer as well. It'll be glossy. So I'm just making sure, especially getting those edges covered. It's going to look milky at first until it dries. have a few little strings here and there that you'll need to clip off. But it makes the material, after it dries, the material pops even, the colors just really stand out even more. Look at it this way. Make sure I got it on these edges. Okay. All right. Looks really milky right now because that's not dry. But once I get ribbons made or a bow made, I think it's going to look really, really cute. Get her hanger on it, and I think we're good to go. Whoops. All right. I got on. Those dots were not dry. Those dots have gotten me in trouble tonight. So let me fix that right quick while it's still wet. Telling you how careful to be with them and then I'm everywhere with them. <laughs> okay, all done, fixed. Like it never happened. And let's go ahead and put, I'm gonna grab just my small brush here to put a little more of that Mod Podge back over it. Okay, let me pull you up and I'll hold it up. If I can get you up without. Okay, I don't think it's gonna fall. Okay, I think once we get the, um, the ribbon on it, I'll get the bees all cleaned up. And once we get that uh, ribbon on it, I think it's gonna be adorable. Just love the little gnomes, they're so cute. I think our colors coordinated well with it. Still can't believe we found ribbon that matches so perfectly. So, a win-win, I think. I think it is. Thank y'all so, so much for hopping on with me. I know that Tamara Bennett is painting uh, 
every night this week. So I think hers just started on Southern Adornments Decor. Southern Adornments Decor. Um, if you'll hop on over there and watch her, she's painting something. She's painting the same thing, only differently in a different way each night, advancing to a different level each night with it. Um, so hop on over there and watch her. And thank you. Thank you so much. Don't forget the live sale Friday night at 630. And uh, Mr. Pam will be helping me with that. This will be my first live, so y'all go easy on me. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But thanks for hopping on. Hi, Carmen. And Roxana, thank you so much. Uh, didn't you put colored tape on your 30 long bristle brush? Uh, I did. I put, I have some rainbow um, duct tape that I put on it so that I could find it easily. Because it's one of my favorite ones. And anytime I'm going to go to a paint party or something that I'm going to, um, I usually mark my brushes with something like this on it. Well, that one's mine. But this is one of my favorite ones, so that's why I put that on there. Not for any other reason, just so when it's sticking in my cup of brushes, it stands out. I can go right to it, and I know which one it is. That's the only reason I did it. All right, thank you, ladies, so, so much. Don't forget to sprinkle um, and to your friends and on your page so that we can have another. I'm telling y'all, my, my videos have just... Um, tripled them what they used to be. I used to be so happy if I got 70 to 100 views. I've got one, um, the, the sled that's almost at, it's over 800 views. Uh, the last two or three have been over 400. So you guys are working so hard for me. Hi, Ashley. Hello, hello. All right. So that's it for tonight. I will see you again uh, Friday night for the live sale if I don't hop on before then. Uh, not sure. I've got a lot to do before I have my surgical procedure Thursday, so I've got to get busy and get things finished. So, all right. Thanks for hopping on. I appreciate every one of you. Good night.